In this video, we're going to tie in the weather across Canada with evolution's mechanism. Please remember that evolution does not claim to know how life originated, but what actually happens to it once it's already there. So now, we're going to take a look at the weather across Canada from west to east in order for you to get an understanding of what it is I am trying to convey here. Vancouver, British Columbia, 8 degrees Celsius, a few clouds. Calgary, Alberta, 5 degrees Celsius, clear. Regina, Saskatchewan, 2 degrees Celsius, overcast. Winnipeg, Manitoba, 0 degrees Celsius, overcast. Toronto, Ontario, 13 degrees Celsius, partly cloudy. Montreal, Quebec, 9 degrees Celsius, light rain showers. Fredericton, New Brunswick, 3 degrees Celsius, partly cloudy. Halifax, Nova Scotia, 3 degrees Celsius, light drizzle. St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador, negative 6 degrees Celsius, a few clouds. Now, you may be asking yourself the question, what does evolution and the weather actually have in common? Well, let us move forward and attempt to address the question at hand. The purpose of showing the weather from west to east across most of Canada was to convey this idea, that large changes happen over large distances of measurement. However, most people who do not understand evolution do so because they do not understand that simple idea. This phylogenetic tree is a simple way of showing the evolutionary relationships among various biological species that are believed to have a common ancestor. Divided groups listed here are prokaryotes, plants, anthropods, fish, reptiles and birds, as well as mammals. The placement of the branches are not placed at random, but only after vigorous data collection and analysis which can be used to calculate genetic distance from multiple sequence alignments. Note that several small changes over several small units of measurement can all add up to a large change over a very large unit of measurement. There's no better way to start off the journey of 100 miles than with the first mile. And perhaps there's no better way to do this than with the common household fruit fly. There are thousands of species of fruit fly with reproductive rates anywhere from 4 to 36 times that of a human's and can lay up to 20 eggs at a time. This allows for huge species diversification since under optimal conditions, by week 3, a pair of fruit flies can become over 1,000 pairs, hundreds upon hundreds of small changes taking place over short periods of time. The offspring become sexually mature within one week. This diversification is exponential, and introducing another species into the mix, who can successfully mate, blows this whole thing out of proportion. When genetic differences accumulate, two separate and isolated populations of the same family of fruit flies can change body size, color, and wing pattern, among hundreds of other characteristics, that will eventually lead to them being unable to mate with each other. So if you've ever been on the phone with a friend who's in the same city as you, and they claim it to be raining while on your end it's nice and sunny, then you should have no problem understanding any of this. 